just a few decades ago, Texas was a different place. The food we ate was grown in our own communities. Today, we're moving less and eating more. Nearly one in three Texans are obese, and obesity has become a leading cause of death in America. But Texans are bringing healthy back. Across the state, communities are being reshaped to support and transform our health and well-being. Because reducing obesity starts with growing community. The USA uh, office here in San Antonio is a small city. Between employees and contractors, there's close to 16, 17,000 people on a daily basis. USAA is the provider of choice for the military community for financial service products. Our population looks a lot like uh, the state of Texas. It's uh, one third of our employees are normal weight, one third of our obese, and one third are overweight. As you know, today, many people spend many hours in a workplace environment, and that can be one of two things, either a healthy experience or an unhealthy experience. We started to notice the employees, their body weights were increasing. We're starting to notice that their health care expenses were increasing for behavioral health related issues. The more obese people we have, the harder it is for us um, to contain our health care costs. So because people spend a majority of their time in a workplace, it's also an opportune place to make changes that are healthier. One of the biggest problems in the food industry is just how available everything is. You know, everything is right there for you to get. It's advertised very well, you know, and a lot of these things are not the best for you. We know that our employees drink a lot of drinks, so knowing that the trend was really going the wrong way around the sugar drinks, you had to do something. My name is Greg Gonzalez, and I work at USA as a bank manager. I used to drink a lot of sodas, um, primarily uh, just regular, you know, nothing diet, and, um, and to the point where buy a 12-pack and it would last maybe two days. And that was just at home, not to mention the vending machines and stopping on the way to work and grabbing a soda at the, at the convenience store, 32 ounces, or sadly enough, the 44 ounce. <laughs> Sugar-sweetened beverages are the largest single source of calories in the American diet. Sugar-sweetened beverages include sports drinks, sodas, sugar-sweetened juices, anything that has a high volume of sugar. There's an easy way to discourage people from drinking sugar beverages, and it is in price. Lower the price of your, of your non-sugar drinks. We worked with our food vendor and our vending vendor and it was a simple changeover. They changed the price, they raised the price a little bit on the sugar beverages, and they decreased the price significantly on the non-sugar beverages. Really what you're doing is you're not changing the amount of revenue that comes out of a vending machine, but you're changing the content of what's in the vending machine. And that's a very effective way to take extra calories out of people's diets. In addition to making uh, changes in vending machines at work sites, I think a very simple no calorie solution is making water readily available. So instead of considering where that vending machine should go, one might consider where a water fountain might go so that employees can drink a known low calorie drink such as water. So I needed to look for something that was low calorie, that I just needed something to drink. So for the first time, probably in my adult life, I started drinking water. If you want to start looking at controlling obesity or keeping people a little bit more honest, you kind of have to help them a little bit. So one of the best things to do is to place things uh, that are basically the, uh, the opposite of what the industry wants you to do. We try to present the most attractive healthy things. So we put the diet drinks in the water and the baked chips at eye level. I remember when they first did it, there was always water and it was always in the bottom. But then one day I went over there and there was the two top rows were water, and then the sodas were reduced to a smaller area. And uh, so that access and having it available, huge difference. It was very easy because we didn't have to buy anything, didn't have to do anything, you just reposition. Um, it seems like a very simple solution, and it really is, but it's had big effects. It was kind of an overnight success, and we watched the behaviors change, and they've stuck with it. And we've been able to be real successful at keeping our healthcare rise in the single digits. 
what we know is that people and employers who have made those changes have reaped the benefits of those changes in a more productive workforce and lower health care costs. And overall, it's been a very positive return on investment. We hope that if people want to make a change, that they know that they have to take it home. Because if you go home and there's burgers and fries and Oreos and Twinkies in the cupboard, it's really hard to resist that when you're trying to lose weight. The access to sodas and things that just aren't good for me, that was a big part of it. So what I did was I went home and I cleaned out all my pantries and my refrigerator of everything that wouldn't be good for me, including the sodas. I do keep myself from having access to things. I would encourage another institution of, of a larger size to say that things can be done at no cost. You know, very simple solutions can be done that can affect large audiences at literally no cost. Our programs are making a huge difference um, for a large population of people. That's really, you know, the thing that I think is important is trying to change the population. And you can really see it happening here. Those things that I've learned at work and the things that they've made accessible to me, I brought them home and shared it with my family and they've, they've all, you know, taken to it as a lifestyle. Quite a change for the better. To learn more, visit TexasBringingHealthyBack.org.